everybody. Welcome back to the Sanctuary Podcast. For now, uh, it's our third or fourth episode into season two, which is all focused on amazing people talking about how God has impacted their lives, especially in the area of creativity and how creativity and spirituality in Christ Jesus has come together in their life. And so I'm really so excited to have one of my favorite people ever <laughs> in the office, Miss Tessa, and I almost called you by your maiden name. I know, I saw it in your eyes. <laughs> I really did. I almost said it. So, uh, Tessa Tumiel. Yes. Yep. And uh, so, welcome, Tess. Thanks so much for having me. It's, I'm so excited to be here. It's so good to have you here. <laughs> um, we've been having amazing conversations already yep. in the lead up to our kind of our pre show conversations. Um, but we start with often, we mm. start with this really, really important question. Of course. What's in your cup? Well, I'll tell you what's in my cup. My beautiful pink cup. Yeah, and large. <laughs> Very large. Yes. 40 ounces. I've got some iced tea in there. Ice tea. Because I'm not a big coffee drinker. Okay. Yes, so, I know. Yes. <laughs> I, I, first of all, that's it's okay. Okay. Um, yes, we we make certain considerations for people on Thank the you. show. Thank you. Um, but uh, we're really excited that you're here. No, I. <laughs> but it's not just tea. It's not just iced no, tea. So no. talk to me about your tea. Yep. So I love loose like fruit teas. So this is a mango black tea that I brewed in my little kettle, like really concentrated, and then I'll put it in here hot add it with ice to the top, and it kind of makes this delicious iced coffee, I mean, iced tea that I drink throughout the day. See, that was a Freudian slip yeah. that you really- I really want coffee, You want to be a saying. coffee person, but, you know. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, we'll keep working on that. Yeah. No, but I, I totally can respect that because yeah. you didn't just, you know, throw some, you know, a bag of tea in there- No, I did not. With some ice. I did not. You know, the the tea equivalent of Cumberland Farms coffee. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow, sorry, that's harsh. sorry, they don't sponsor us. <laughs> okay, anyway, so, so we're okay. no money lost None there whatsoever. Good, so, good. Uh, so uh, you mentioned that you get this from a specialty tea shop. I do in Westport. Yep, I believe it's called Arogia. Okay. Something like that. It's in Westport, downtown Westport. That kind of sounds like a tea shop. As it far does, as I'm right? right? It totally does, and she has just like walls filled with loose teas. And she is so passionate about talking about them. So you go in there and say, I, she'll ask you like what kind of teas you like and she'll make recommendations and she's just the best. That's so awesome. I love mango everything. Do so. you prefer like fruitier teas? Yeah, I would say berries, mangoes, that kind of thing. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that's kind of like, uh, I'm just going to be funny here. <laughs> Tell me. Like bougie Kool-Aid for adults, right? <laughs> <laughs> spot on spot on i'm not even ashamed yeah, no, yeah that's no. totally I, it. I just messed with you i actually um i i actually like herbal tea or yeah. as we said in australia herbal tea herbal that's just feels that doesn't wrong, make but any sense i know i need some herbs for I my need, cooking it, well that's actually that a word too i couldn't say it yeah it did take us a while <laughs> um but anyways uh yeah maybe we just sound pretentious or herbs. french saying herbs de Provence. Yeah, exactly. That's what they do. That's yeah. right. They also, instead of saying like a uh, filet, like yeah. a filet mignon, or like that they would say, yeah. or a chicken filet, they'd yeah. say a fillet. And that, that just felt wrong too. Um, that doesn't well, sound right. as delicious. No. As a filet. Exactly. <laughs> that's like, you know, a fillet of chicken. But anyways, nope. we adapted. Um, yep. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Gladly. So, so I, where do you want me to start? Start with, uh, how long have you been married? Oh, three months. Coming on three months. Three so, months. Yeah, we got so, married in June. Still fresh. Still fresh, but it feels like we really got into the rhythm quickly. Like nice. we just moved in and it has just been so awesome to have our own space together, to cook, to just, last night we were playing rummy at our kitchen table with a candle and French like jazz music in the background. And I told Bruce, I think we're 80 years old because this is what elderly couples do <laughs> at night. At like 4.30 in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it was right it. after work. It was five <laughs> o'clock. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. But That's we just, awesome. we, we've been really enjoying it. It's, it's awesome. That sounds like you should be at like some French cafe. Right? With you know that the the candle is actually like an old Chianti bottle Ooh, with like, I like you know it. a red candle that yep. stripped wax all over it for thirty years. I'm loving this vibe. Wow. Anyways, <laughs> but 
But yeah, it's been awesome. I also work here at the church. Yeah. I'm the graphic designer, but I think my role, my actual role name is creative assistant manager, which is pretty Assistant funny. to the to, manager? Yes. Okay. I actually have a sign that Josh gave me on my desk that says assistant to the regional manager. That's awesome. Which I'm very proud of. So we're going to yeah. get back to yep. your role and what yep. you do. But that's a great segue yes. into one of your other passions, which yes. is the TV show, The Office. The Office. Office. Um, the best show in the world. That's something else we share in common because we yeah. really love The Office yeah. too. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that my kids um, have both uh, really gotten into The Office over yeah. their years too because there's so many Gen Zers that I know within our sanctuary community yeah. that really don't like The Office or they don't find Wait, it. Wait, really? Uh, no joke. They don't find it funny. They don't understand what? the humor. Because it's um, very dry humor, like workplace Yes, I was going to say it's intelligent, but it's not. But no, it, um, I wouldn't call it's it intelligent. Not, and that's why I like it. Um, I, maybe you're trying to make yourself feel better. Maybe. About. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> Just their IQ can't handle it. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyways. Yeah. yeah. So talk to me about uh, your favorite character on The Office. Dwight. Just Dwight right out the Schrute. gate. Dwight Schrute. People think that he's the villain of The Office, but I feel like he's the heart. Like he is like that episode when he sees Pam crying and he offers her not his jacket, but like a tissue because he's worried about her. I feel like that's when you kind of see Dwight blossom into this character that his like facade is that he wants to prank, but that's his way of like connecting with people. Mm. So he maybe it's hard for him to say, hey, I really like you as a friend. So instead he plays with Jim and pranks him throughout the entire show. But Jim is one of his closest friends. He would probably say, behind closed doors. So I just, I love that about him, that he shows his love in that way. And he's goofy, he's funny, but he's just a loving guy, like a loving, tall, goofy guy. Totally. (laughs) I love uh, some of the episodes when Dwight um, psychs himself up for sales calls. In the car. In the car by listening to like (laughs) hardcore music. Yep, metal music. Literally banging his head on the car seat. Um, Yeah, oh, it's the best. That is so, that is amazing. (laughs) Um, that sums it up. So, uh, yeah, Dwight Schrute. Um, now one of the things, uh, let me ask you this question. We'll we'll go back to this. He's not the villain. Are you also one of those people that like, um, writes blogs on why Darth Vader is actually the hero of, of Star Wars and the Jedi are actually the evil (laughs) people and, or Voldemort is actually the hero of Harry Potter. (laughs) I actually am not that person, but I am also the person who doesn't like Jim and Pam. I'm sorry. I feel like maybe wow. that was harsh to say, but it might be. I'm not. I think I'm Jim not and Pam biggest. may be like American royalty. <sighs> they're they're the villains. Hot yeah. take: they're the villains. Okay, that could be a whole other podcast. It really could be. Okay, and I'm happy to unpack so, that at another time. Uh, Tessa, <laughs> uh, talk to me about where you grew up. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Munich, in Germany. Um, for, for most Americans, that's in Germany. Sorry, yeah, I feel like I always have to clarify yeah, where Munich do. is. It's in Bavaria, southern part of if, Germany. If from southern Connecticut, you'd be like, is that past Hartford? <laughs> yeah. Is that somewhere is that up somewhere in, in that, that part of the state I that heard. I don't really know about? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yep. So in Germany, my mom was working there at the time for her father, who was a pre-Columbian art dealer. So she was his assistant and, you know, just helping him out. And she met my dad, and who was living there at the time. Grew up in Munich, and yeah, then I, I grew up there till I was, I lived there till I was 10. My parents got divorced when I was around two years old. Mm. Um, and then my mom and I moved to Costa Rica because she had family over there. My aunt owns a lodge there on the Caribbean side. So we lived there for two years. I hated it because it was so different from Germany. Germany wow. was very... Culturally, yeah. climate, all of the above? I would say all of the above. Culturally, it was just so different. In Costa Rica, people were like on their own time, like pura vida, we do whatever we want, mm. whenever we want. And to me, that was like a shock to the system. I was wow. like, no, I like my calendar. I like, you know, knowing when I'm doing what. And it was just like, it kind of all that crumbled to the ground. So I say that I'm going to go back one day and re-experience Costa Rica, but... I I just love Germany. I haven't yet. You haven't yet. I have not made the journey back. Wow. Yeah. So when did you move to the States? In 2008. How old were you then? I was going into, I was going into middle school. I was just finishing fifth grade. Wow. Yeah. So uh, you speak German. Yes. Fluently. Yes. 
did you learn Spanish when you were in yeah, Costa Rica? Yeah, my mom just threw me into a Spanish-speaking school and was like, good luck. And I picked it up in two months. And then I, I still understand it perfectly, but I can't speak it as well because I haven't been practicing sure. it sure. since. But I think I could pick it back up if I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. I think you could. I could, maybe. Especially living in Southern Connecticut. It's not like True. It I don't be... use it as much as German. That's for sure. For real. Well, no, I wouldn't use German as much as Spanish. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, I thought you meant you speak anyways. <laughs> All right. Well, um, yep. so th- I, I just love that. That 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 is such a unique mm. cornucopia of <laughs> cultures right there. I mean, it really <laughs> I is. I like that. So, um, you know, and now you've married Bruce, yep. who comes from a Turkish family. Yep. Wow. That is yeah. like... The goal is to raise, I don't know if this is actually going to happen, but our kids, we would love it if we could raise them with three languages. Like I only speak German to them. He only speaks Turkish and they experience English and culture. That would be awesome. It would be awesome for a multiplicity of reasons. One being, that's just cool. Right. (laughs) Second thing, then you can both have private conversations and manipulate your kids. True, Um, because that's what you really want to do as a good parent. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the third thing is, uh, I don't know if you've heard this before, but when uh, you grow up learning multiple languages, Mm -hmm. the way that your brain um, forms uh, neural pathways, that when you get older, you have a far less likelihood of dementia. Oh, really? Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, because huh. the way that your brain uh, is always interpreting in multiple yeah. languages yeah. Um, and quickly. So, That's so cool. Yeah, I still dream in German. I was just about to ask that Which is that so question. weird. It's so weird to me. And people always ask, oh, why don't you have a German accent? It's because I basically, I wasn't speaking any English in Germany. I was just picking up my mom's American accent. So when people, when people talk to my mom and I, we literally sound the same because I picked up all of her like weird quirks in the way that she speaks. Like even the way that we pronounce different words is exactly the same. So I'm just like a carbon copy of the way that she speaks English. So when you go to Germany, do they think you sound like an American speaking German? I just, I just sound German. Okay. So it's, 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 I always get that question, like you don't sound German. It's like, no, because I sound like my mom. (laughs) Like when we both pick up the phone, people always think it's, I'm Alexia, not Tessa. That's really cool. Trippy. Wait, your mom's name's Alexia. Yeah. That would really get confusing in my house because yeah. we have Alexa, okay. who I speak to regularly. Right, right. We might want to mute this because people's Alexa will start going. That would be awesome. <laughs> Alexa, turn off living room lights. Yes. Alexa, start playing metal Alex- rock. <laughs> totally. Alexa, play death metal. <laughs> Do I treat death metal now? Okay. Um, so <clears throat> you grew up. Overseas, yep, came yep. to America. So you've got this, you know, incredible, you know, mm. patchwork of mm. cultures coming together. Yeah. So tell me about your journey of faith. Yeah. So in Germany, I grew up Catholic. Like I was, I my grandma put me into the Catholic Church as one of the people who would like walk incense down the aisle at like Sunday morning, six thirty in the morning. So high church Catholic. High church. Like I had to put on the muslin like th- like thing, put the belt on, and like you know, walk down the aisle, you know. So that was, I had no idea what I was doing. Mm. It was just like, do this, you do this every Sunday. I didn't know what the meaning of it was, why I was doing it, what the purpose was. And that was basically my my upbringing in Germany. In Costa Rica, there wasn't really any kind of like church we went to. Mm. Um, And then we moved to America and we had gone to a congregational church in Westport. Um, Again, didn't really know why were we going every Sunday? It was just a thing that we did. Um, and then one Sunday, my mom's friend, Laura, was like, oh, why don't you come to Black Rock? <laughs> we're like, okay, sure, we'll okay. come check it out. And we went to the morning service, and someone had mentioned Sanctuary, the 6 o'clock service that night, now 5 o'clock. That's right. Thank you for correct Thank that. you for clarifying that. Um, back, when, back when I was in church, it was at 6 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> the good You're ones. so old. <laughs> um, So I went that same day. I came back. So we went to the 10 o'clock service. I came back that night to check out the the sanctuary service, saw Rob speaking, heard the music, and I was just like, what is this? Like, I was just hooked by the, like, how kind the people were, Mm. the excellence in the service, like, everything just spoke to me, like, the beauty of it. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. No worries. And yeah, I was like, I want more of this. So I kept going to the sanctuary services like for three or four weeks. And then I finally, as an introvert, I like got up the courage to go up to Rob after a service. And I was like, so I like to design. Um, is there anything that I can help with? Sorry. <clears throat> That's probably really good for the audio. That's all right. You're good. Um, and he's like, yeah, come on, come on in tomorrow. And we could just hang out and see what you can do. I was like, okay. And just from there on out, I was at church every Sunday in the morning. I would come to sanctuary at night. And I would just started learning all about God and who he mm. was and that he wasn't this like old man. I really saw him as an old man in the sky with a beard pointing fingers. Mm. Like that was mm. how I saw him. And I think that's why I never wanted to learn more, grow closer, because I was just scared that I wasn't doing the right things. Right. So your perspective of God, shaped by probably a lot of different things, yeah. was that God was a distant, yes. grumpy old man yep. who was looking to zap people. Yep, basically. And that... Also has to do with my own father. Like I don't have, mm. at that point in time, was not close with my dad whatsoever. So I think I was reflecting my earthly relationship with my dad mm. onto the heavenly father sure. and was thinking, well, dads in general just aren't great. And when we use the term father, God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I think that kind of mirrored and I just had like a bad taste in my mouth. So, but then coming to BlackRock, it kind of, retaught me all of this information that I thought I knew mm. but really didn't and learning about the Bible and what the history of it was and reading it. And I feel like my eyes were open and I was learning all this amazing stuff and I just couldn't get enough of it. That's awesome. And Well, yeah. it also sounds like for you, it was uh, a process of you kind of came to sanctuary. You, you started to belong to the community. Yes, for sure. And as you you started your journey of what do you believe? Yeah. Yeah. And then, so yeah. Yeah. sometimes we get that, we think it should, it, it's often the other way. You start a relationship of mm. believing in God, then you come to church, start That's to true. belong. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, the community impacts yeah. your life. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that, that story. Yeah. Um, so was there a defining moment where you like said, mm. you know, yeah, I'm all in with Jesus mm. or was it still more of a process or yeah. a little bit of both? I think it was more of a process. I can't necessarily think back to one point where I was like, I'm all in. It mm. was more of a daily learning more and more and having those aha moments mm. while reading the Bible where I'd be like, oh my goodness, that's awesome. And oh my goodness, that's awesome. Like it was just that over and over again. Mm. And I think that kind of then builds to like an, like a big one moment where you're right. like, I just fell in love with God over a series of months and years. And I just see that time as like, him just ushering me in and being like, Tess, I know that you've had a really like wrong idea of who I am, but now I want you to learn who I really am. And that was like just the sweetest few years of being able to rediscover that. That's yeah. awesome. I love how uh, we've been talking in this, this season about how creative God is. Yep. And I love how everybody's journey of faith is a unique creative yeah. story yep. that God yep. is really personal. Yeah. And meets us in those personal ways that for you, it probably w was the best process that he could reveal himself yeah. incrementally yeah. and over time. Yeah. I think that's the only way I could have taken it in yeah. <laughs> is slowly. <laughs> right. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's let's do what we've been doing in this series in is in this season is now like, let's connect those two things. Mm. So talk to me about, you're, the, you know, you're on staff, you do creative design. Yeah. Is that what you went to school for? I originally went to school for computer science. Ugh. <laughs> That's the sound <laughs> I have to describe that. <laughs> I thought, like, right, my idea was, oh, well, I, I guess I should quickly talk about how I got into graphic design. Yeah. My mom owned a fabric and sewing store in downtown Fairfield, she opened that up in 2009, and she really needed a web designer for the web for the business to create a website. And we had shopped around for prices, and prices were insane, like especially in Fairfield County. And so I was like, okay, I'll go teach myself how to build websites. So I went to Barnes and Noble in Westport and picked up a copy of HTML for Dummies. Whoa. <laughs> So you're not just talking I, about building. You're picking up books on coding. I guess I didn't know YouTube existed. <laughs> I was like, let me buy this book. This will do it, <laughs> which makes no sense. But I picked that up and just started teaching myself a little bit 
of like coding, which I guess I could have also just built it on Wix or whatever. But anyways, yeah. this is the the avenue I took. And then also started learning about Photoshop and all like all these programs that existed for design. And things just kind of clicked for me because I knew that all my life, especially in Germany, I would always look at billboards or like beautiful like designs, colors, the way things aligned, contrast, all of that. And I'd be like amazed by it. Mm. Like I knew I knew that God had created me to be very observant and detail oriented. But then I saw that there was a way to actually like create things on the screen that like did it just reflected the same like design principles I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? So I made my mom's website and then she would need a flyer. She would need a business card. We would need to make like a thing for a Facebook event. And I just started playing around and I loved it. Like I could not, again, with the Bible, like I couldn't get enough of the excitement that I got when putting colors and fonts and designs together. Like it just happened. So when you were creating, yeah, it sparked life in you. Oh Yeah. Big time. It energized you. Big time. Like I would stay up so late just being like, mom, like I made seven different designs. Which one do you like? Wow. Yeah. It was just so fun. And then before I knew it, people would come into the store and be like, oh, who, who's your designer? And my mom would be like, oh, it's my daughter. And I would start getting like gigs on the side of creating logos and business cards for local businesses. And so I, the beginning really of my design career is completely self-taught. Like I was just looking up YouTube tutorials. I was testing things out. Um, and then I thought- Did that process of learning excite you too? Yes. Okay. Very much so. Because I was learning new things and I would look at a design and be like, how can I replicate that? Mm. And I would like YouTube it. And sure enough, there was a tutorial. So, yeah. So you discovered YouTube at that point. Yes. Okay, that's good. And, I uh, guess I came out from under the rock <laughs> and I realized there's the internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But it's, you said when you were a kid living in Germany too, yeah. the, uh, I'll, I'll describe this, that the way you saw the world around you and your lens yep. of observation yep. you knew was unique. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that still the case? And how you see the world? I see we'll be driving and I just look at the way that like a door frame on a house is like perfectly aligned with like – the sh like just really stuff that you shouldn't see in such a quick moment in driving by, I like zoom in on it and like have a moment of like, ah, oh, that's really nice. Or the way that like a plant is leaning some way that's really aesthetically pleasing. Like I just, I look at lines and balance and contrast like automatically. I don't know. It's how my brain processes the world, I think. Well, the the unique thing is when I hear you talking, Tess, you're, you're, you're both, and we kind of talked about this, you're both seeing um, function and mm -hmm. engineering yeah. as intriguing, yeah. but then you also see, you're looking at beauty. So yeah. uh, you're saying like I see plants, yes, yeah, but I'm also seeing how they're engineered or yeah. how they're you know they're um, they're leaning, yeah, yeah, uh, where other people can just be like, wow, that's a flower, <laughs> that's beautiful. You're also seeing the structural design yeah. as part of it, yeah, um, yep. shapes, yeah. That's that's a unique yeah. thing uh, in perspective, even within the creatives mm, yeah. to see things differently, yeah. you know, where for you, you, we were talking about it's both design as well as form, function, and yeah. beauty within it. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Like, I, and I think God honors that. Like, I think he really sees the way I see the world and speaks to me through that. Like, I just feel like we have, I kind of joke with him, I feel like we have this really special connection where... He'll point something out or I'll look at something and I have like this, just this moment. I don't know how to describe it, but I feel like he really uses those moments of like even my Bibles, right? Like I love a beautifully well-designed Bible. Like if the typeset is done really well and the type on the front page aligns with – like you know how sometimes there's ghosting on one side of the page of the yeah, Bible? Yeah. But some Bibles where they really care about their type will line match it so that the text on the front matches the text on the back page so that there's no ghosting of text in between the lines. Something like that, I'm like, yes. Like, that was handled beautifully. And I, it's, it sounds silly when I'm talking about it, but that's where I experience, like, the intentionality and the excellence of God's word handled well. Mm. And that's where I have those moments where I'm like, Lord, thank you for giving us, like, designers and people who care so much about present like representing you well 
mm. in a Bible. Like it seems so small, but to me, it seems so important. And I think that's why people are always like, you have so many Bibles. And I'm like, yeah, because I love to experience the physicality of the paper and the way that it was bound and all of that. Like that just gets me excited. I don't know why. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, talk to me. You've, you've got an, a living example uh, on the desk. Yes, uh, I do. Talk to me. Why don't you hold it up so the camera can see that camera over there? There you go. Can see a little bit. Yeah. So this is a Cambridge, which Cambridge is like a really well-known um, Bible I don't know, creator, Bible publisher, publisher Distributor. out of out of England. And they take real pride in um, just really great paper, like a great paperweight. They have their references in the middle and they give you plenty of space for note taking. Um, and this Bible had actually come hardcover, but I got it rebound up by Paul's Leather Co. up in Wallingford. So shout out to them because they're awesome. Yes, a Connecticut-based company. Yes, exactly. Um, so they rebound it and I designed this little design on the front and they burned it onto the letter, the leather. And then I put in my own bookmarks. I made my own Bible tabs. I just like during that process, it's, it's just an enjoyable process for me to go through it because I feel like I'm communing with God in some way of like, I, I'm learning more about you and the way that you, you created the world and I want to handle it well in response. Wow. You know? So that really is, and we've been talking about it in this this season, talking about where God is a creator, and then we bear His image yeah. as creation. Yeah. Therefore, every one of us has the capacity to create. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um, because of His, you know, spiritual yeah. DNA in our. That's in the our first system. thing we learn about God is that He created, like mm. Genesis one one. Right. That's the first personality trait we learn about God is that He created, that He's a creator. So I think. And because we are his creation, I feel like it doesn't have to be graphic design, but for everyone, there is this like deep soul desire to create something because we're mirroring and reflecting the image of God, who he himself made, like made the world. And like, when you look at a flower, like you can't not be astounded by how that flower looks, like the way that it's perfectly symmetrical, the way that the petals just fall out perfectly. The colors, like the way that the colors really saturate in the middle and then goes out and fades out. Like that's crazy. It's amazing. <laughs> it the I love it because Tess, when you talk about that, you're not talking about as as someone who's like a horticulturist. You're talking about no. admiring God as an artist. Like yeah. you respect God's oh, yeah. artistic ability. For sure. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah. He's um, so creative. <laughs> <laughs> do you, as you continue to grow in your creative abilities and understanding creative process, mm. does that give you a greater, you know, respect and understanding and connection? Yeah. Because you talked about that. Yeah. Doing this helps you connect yeah. with God. No, for sure. I think, and that's why I try to do everything I do with excellence because I don't want to throw away the talent or the skills he's given me. So if I know that he's given me a, a great ability to design, then I want to make sure that everything I'm making, because that ends up being a reflection of God, because I'm doing everything for the glory of God. So what I create, what I produce, reflects his his character mm. and his beauty. So I don't want to do something haphazardly. Like I don't want to just put it together and be like, good enough. Mm. I want to put as much good work as I can into it so that when someone sees it, and I know I'm just creating like graphics on a TV that, you know, announce an event. But at the end of the day, when a woman looks at a woman's event graphic and sees the artwork on it and the fonts and the colors, and it's pleasing to her and it, 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 she appreciates the beauty of it, hopefully that will enable her or excite her to go to the event. So there is some kind of like, almost like springboard that my designs have, hopefully, for people to experience God in a better way. Wow. So I love that because you're actually saying people are having an experience with creativity and design that hopefully is an invitation for them to experience the That's God the goal. Yeah. within that. Yeah. Um, and, you, and sometimes those, those experiences we're having with beauty and creativity and design yeah. are subconscious. Yeah. Oh, you're not even aware of it. That, that woman probably isn't thinking, oh, I really like the design of that. It's just, it just happens in her brain subconsciously. She's like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. Mm. I'll go there. Well, I think that we're, because we're created in the creator's image, I think we're also created 
to respond to creativity done well. Yeah, I think we're also we're having. Um, I think we are having encounters at uh, sometimes mm. um, with God subliminally too, yeah. like uh, subconsciously. Yeah. Um, because I even say, even uh, an atheist, agnostic, mm. someone who hates God, yeah, when they are, are when they are creating, they're still bearing testimony, yeah, to the Creator, yeah, absolutely, especially when they do it well. Yep. yep. Um, so we were talking about your, your about, you know, even about this Bible mm. and how you uh, got it, put a different cover on it. Yep. Added your own bookmarks. Yes. <laughs> That are different colors. My favorite colors. And, green. and, and <laughs> then added your own tabs. Yeah. And I love that, uh, Tessa, about you because uh, there's function. Mm. You can find your place in the Bible yes. quickly. Yes. And then there's there's the creative design behind it. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the happy place. That's where like, because yes, beauty is beautiful just on its own, but when it actually serves a purpose... That's that's like that's my happy place. I just want to live there forever because all the good things happen there. Let's, let's dive into those words because I think you know obviously that uh, like the ethereal happy place. Sure. But for you, I've also seen your that creative uh, heartbeat that you have mm. isn't just about graphics and design, mm. which I see it. It's not just about creating um, you know cool Bibles to carry around. Yeah. You you actually like to create environments. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up because it was on my notes. Really? Yes. I love it. I have it written So talk down. to me about that. <laughs> yeah, I think, because I just, right, we just got married. I was able to decorate our new place. And in my mind, I was like, this is going to be awesome. Because I don't think that, again, like when we think about God and his presence and how we love to sit in it and bask in it, it's a comfortable place. And I... Really, my goal with our place at home was to create a place when people walk in where it feels peaceful, it feels comforting, it feels like they can just sit down on the couch, have a cup of coffee, and hang out there for hours. That's the feeling I wanted. And what's been so cool is that I get to take my love for design, which tends to only happen on a screen. I'm looking just at a screen most of the mm. time and typing. I do love to use my hands because I feel like that even gives me more inspiration than just looking on Pinterest or something, but actually working with my hands enables me to give me that space outside of the screen. So putting our home together was just such a blessing and it was so exciting for me to place everything in a way that makes it feel peaceful in there. And that's what's been so awesome is that as we've had people over for dinner and friends over, they walk in and they're just like, you can you can like feel them take like a sigh of relief. They're like, ah. And I'm like, yep, that's the that's the feeling I want mm. when you enter our space. And Margie and Dan came over, sweet friends of ours, for dinner the other night. And they made this this funny kind of observation. They're like, there's peace in here. We wanted to go, we want the peace to go out when you guys leave. So we came up with this phrase, peace out. So now whenever Bruce or I leave, we go, peace out. I mean, not this. Don't yeah, do that. But peace out, right? Like we're taking the peace that's in our home. And the goal is then to take that out. But I just, I love that they made that observation wow. because that's how I want it to feel. And you, design doesn't just mean you have to do it on a screen. Like you can do it anywhere. You mm -hmm. can, in the way that your living room is put together, in the way that you put together a flower arrangement, in the way that, I don't know, you put together your desk at work. Like, just make it intentional. And I feel like those spaces welcome conversations of like, oh, I really like how you did that. Well, let me tell you <laughs> mm. why I love being creative and where that comes from and like where my source of creativity comes from. So there's a, there's a possibility for conversation to happen when people see what I love to do. That's awesome. And they're experiencing it. Yeah. Because, you know... Like you said, they see a flyer, they can have an experience. Yeah. They come into an environment, they're having an experience. Yeah. And yeah. like you said, that they're experiencing peace, I think on multiple levels, because mm. also one of uh, Bruce's favorite greeting that yeah. he'll give you is shalom, yeah. right? And that and hangs on our door. Frame, on our door. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, you actually guys, you have a mezuzah from mm -hmm. Israel on your door. Yeah, yeah. That We'll talk about that in another <laughs> podcast. But the, you're... 
uh, your hope is that people, as they encounter your home, mm-hmm. because the way you've designed it, yep. they're having an encounter with peace. When they're encountering you guys as carriers of peace, yep. um, because we've also been in environments that the the design might be good, mm-hmm. but the vibe isn't good. Yes. Oh, 100%. And I think sometimes yeah. that's uh, that's they're having a spiritual encounter as well. Yes. Um, I, I think it's... I, I th- uh, Tess, I would say that you, you, you are actually creating the environment outside of you that God has created in you, mm, one yeah. of peace. Yeah. Um, and so it's both. It's not an either or. Mm, it's both. And. Yeah, yeah. Your environment's impacting you, but yeah. what God has done in your heart, in your yeah. life, yeah. has spilled over into your creativity. Yeah. Um, so this is really cool because I actually feel like I'm – I'm having a conversation with my wife Carrie too, because that's what she does. <laughs> yeah. Is you know uh, she creates by design. She mm-hmm. creates in interior design. Yeah. Just for our home. Yeah. Yeah. Carrie moves furniture and oh. moves uh, oh. constantly. <laughs> that uh, was me. <laughs> ex- it, and I think part of it is she's like, "Oh, I just like change." I think part of it is she's going, "I." She that's a creative outlet yeah, for. Yeah, for sure. Big time. I'll come home and she'll, you know, she's got the mantle and she goes, what do you think about it? And I'm like, is it different than it was before? I should have taken a picture exactly, before Exactly. Yeah, what's different? This is going to, is this going to be on the test? Is this going to be quizzed on this? She goes, what are you, you know. The candlestick moved exactly, two inches that's right, over. Exactly. But for her, it's, it's not just going, how does it look? She's saying, um, what's the environment that I've created here? Mm, yeah. What do you feel about this? Yep. Well, how does it look? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and it's not about expensive pieces or buying everything, right? It's, it's about not? you. No. Okay. I, I, breaking news. It's Thank not. You. All right. Good. <laughs> but it's about using what you have in in a way that you just you're intentional with what you have. Like we don't have fancy furniture or fancy items. Like we have our TV stand is from Retail 101 for twenty dollars, right? But you hunt for things and there's excitement in hunting for things and then you put it together and it that just I feel like goes to show you don't have to be wealthy or well off to create a beautiful space. You hunt for it, you you use what you have and and that's I feel like what is even more important than the items. That's awesome. Than some them, themselves. Yeah. All right. Two more things. Yeah. Talk to me about this book that you have. Yeah. So this is, I'll hold it up. It's uh, called Called to Create by Jordan Raynor. Um, The subtitle of the book is A Biblical Invitation to Create, Innovate, and Risk. And Carrie Jelinek actually gave this to me um, when I started working here. And it definitely drives big on the like my philosophy of creativity and why I do the work that I do. Um, And he just talks all about, right? God is the creator and we are a reflection of that. Mm. And how can we best use that that passion that we've been given doesn't have to be designed, but in a way to reflect back onto the creator. Mm. And one of my favorite parts of this book is when he talks about the tabernacle, which that could be a whole nother podcast episode. But when I look at like my favorite books of the Bible are Exodus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, because they show God's heart for like detail. If you think about the way that he asked the priest to put together the tabernacle where it was at that point in time, the the, the way that you experience God's presence, mm. the way everything pointed to the Holy of Holies and the design of it, like the layout. I mean, that it blows my mind. If you think about how intentional God was in that of saying this had to be this many centimeters and it had to be this long and this high. Like, in this color. In this color, so much talk of color. In this <laughs> Fabric or yep. this element or yep. this specific tree, which yeah. is both a form, function, tactile, yep. all of that. It's just that that was an eye opener for me to really realize that God is okay with how detail oriented I am. Like, you know, because sometimes I can get tripped up on that or I can get annoyed with myself. But when I read about God's characteristics in that way, I feel like, I don't know, the not the guilt, but I feel better about how I can be annoying about some details sometimes. <laughs> Maybe not annoying, Tessa. Well, you know, but... Isn't there isn't there the statement, God is in the details? Yes, and so. he, he, he definitely is. He definitely is. But 
Yeah, I, I have one quote from this book, if, if it's okay that yeah, I, of course. I'll read it. Um, it says, if we see our creating as a means of revealing God's character and loving others, then we have proper ambition to create like we are running out of time because, in fact, we are. And I, I love that because not only, right, we don't create or design for the sake of making our name, like my name, great. I create for the, the sole factor of making God's name great. And if I know that my time is running out here on heaven, uh, here, on, here, in, uh, here on earth, which it is, then I have that proper ambition to do it as well as I can, with as much excellence as I can, um, so that more people can experience him, even mm. if it's in the tiniest ways. Like mm. I know I'm not up on stage preaching a message, but in the ways that I'm doing my small part of the body of Christ, I want to do it really well and with excellence because my time is running out. That's so cool. That yeah, is really that's a good cool. quote. I actually think um, I, I appreciate your... Uh, your perspective on that. As someone who does get to preach from the platform, mm. I say thank you that your creativity does mm. preach, proclaim, mm. and reflect the glory of God. Mm. Um, I think that uh, I love how the Renaissance, mm. while missing sometimes key pieces of the gospel, yeah. uh, was a visual representation of the heart of God often. Yeah, yep. And that people who are illiterate yeah. can have... Uh, uh, can come to know a little bit more about God because yeah. the way that the Renaissance uses creativity, art, and design yeah. Yeah, as sure. a reflection of our creative. For sure, yeah. Um, Talk about, I think it was Bach who he, now I'm, I'm not sure, I'm, so I'm, if I'm being misquoted, don't blame me, but. It's really cool that you're you're quoting two Germanic guys. That's really good. I might be biased, but <laughs> they're pretty awesome. But one, I think there's Bach, Beethoven, and Dwight Schrute. Yeah, okay, that's keep going. That's basically keep all going. I need. <laughs> that in the Bible, and that's I'm good. I'm all set. Um, but he, I think I think it was Bach. He like really wanted to marry theology and music. Mm. That was his like goal, and he created a series of songs that w could be used on each Sunday of the year where people could experience God and that there's quotes of him talking about this. I'm totally botching it, but I love that he, his passion and the reason he created music was so that people could experience God. Wow. Like that was his only purpose in making music. And then mm. you listen to a piece of his and what else can you think about? I mean, he was, it's beautiful that you can experience just in the sounds that music makes, be able to experience the glory that he was trying to give to God, that he successfully gave to God. That's awesome. So. One last thing. Yes. So uh, we thanks for sharing that book. Yep. Uh, we're going to put um, both uh, a link to that. Yep. And uh, to your book called "To Create," as well as uh, Paul's Leather. Awesome. Company um, yeah. that we're uh, to give a shout out to them, but also to let people. Yeah. Uh, I have a Paul's Leather Bible yeah, as well. That was a gift, uh, birthday <laughs> gift. Um, and and I, I'm the same way. I love technology yeah. and its function, yep. um, but I'm tactile too. Yeah. So I have a leather analog yeah. journal. Yep. Um, analog. Oh, you like that? <laughs> yeah. It's my analog Bible too. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, I I speak to my Bible and I say, Alexa, find this, and it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't but anyways, do anything? It doesn't, no. That's so weird. We should um, work on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyways. Uh, so what advice would you give to creatives uh, mm. on using their creativity as a connection point to God? My number one encouragement would be to just show up. I think a lot of creatives are, their inner mind space goes, oh, it's not needed because it's something like it is already out there, or I would just be adding something else that already exists, or it's not good enough. Like they mm. have all these excuses, because I've been there. I've had those excuses being told to myself. Mm. So my number one advice is to show up and just do it. Mm -hmm. Like so much fear is dispelled by just putting hands to whatever you're doing and starting it. And th that's the beautiful thing about creativity is that everyone experiences it in a different way. So to the person who is scared, make it and put it out into the world and see what comes back at you because it 
people will have such different perspectives. They see everything in a different way, and you don't know who's going to react to something that you create in a mm. really powerful way. Mm. So that's also encouragement to myself when I am scared to do something is just to show up and to do it because your creativity is needed in this world. It really is. It, it, it will add another layer of goodness and beauty to what people experience on a daily basis. And don't feel like you have to change the world all at once, yeah. right? Start small. Do something simple. Do something small once a day. And something that's important for me, and I think it helps a lot of designers, is to like do some small creative task a day, whether that's like sketching something on a piece of paper or yeah. holding a piece of origami or taking a walk and looking at the trees. Like something small that just spurs your creativity on because we get so used to just staring at a screen for hours on end every day and we don't get out of that space. Mm. Like we're just stuck there. So get out into nature, go read a book, do something with your hands. Like that's, that's awesome. my number one tip. Just do something with your hands. That's so cool. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Tess. This my has pleasure. been good. I, I feel like we could just keep talking. Yeah. Um, but I've run out of cold brew. <laughs> And, uh, I haven't had a sip of my tea. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, can you, um, would you be willing to just to, to look in the camera and talk to yeah. the mic and just release like a blessing, yeah. a charge to uh, people who are creative, whether yeah. they yeah. believe it or not, whether yeah. they know it or not, or whether they are yeah. creatives and have that creative heart? Yeah. Yeah. So my encouragement to you is that you have a place at the table. You're able to show up to sit down and have a seat where so all of all the people of God are sitting and you have something to give, you have something to add to the conversation. So my biggest piece of encouragement to you is to show up to do um, what it is you are called to with um, with courage, knowing that the Father is just so excited about what you have in your heart to release it to the world. So, yeah. Hope Thank happens. you, Tessa. Thank you so much for joining My us pleasure. today. This is so cool. <laughs> and thank you for watching or listening wherever you want, listen or watch our podcast on YouTube at Sanctuary CT. Please follow us so you won't miss an episode whatsoever. Subscribe uh, on YouTube. Uh, we'd love to have you join us every time we do this. And do us a favor, please. If you enjoy this, please share it. Please like it. Please add encouraging comments uh, to the dialogue. Check out our show notes and comments where we'll have links for those things. Also, if you can do us a huge favor to stay connected to you, uh, follow us on Instagram at We Are Sanctuary. Uh, share this wherever you can, uh, not because we're trying to become famous, but because these stories of, of Tessa and really God's story in us is worth sharing around the world. It can impact people in amazing ways. Thanks for being a part of this journey with us, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again. Thanks so much. Have a great week.